know that that is a topic near and dear to many of you, and you will learn some great basics within the workshop today, and Iris will provide you some additional resources and some tips that will help you with your writing. And also, Iris, we should probably close out with just a little reminder of the Writing Center and what the services are available for students. So we will be recording this session. And we will be asking from time to time if you could just let us have your names, because we would like to send you a survey to assess your thoughts of the workshop today. This is the first of four workshops that we will be conducting throughout the year. The first one today is on APA basics. The next one coming up will be on verisite and plagiarism. I know a huge topic of interest to all of you. So thank you again for joining us. And we have a small group, so if you could please address your questions either through the visual chat box or through the auditory phone, whichever is easiest for you. So Iris, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Michael. So welcome, everybody. And uh, today we're just going to go through the basics of APA, show you some resources that, uh, is, that are available to you at any point, um, just for quick review or if you have a question. And of course, the Writing Center has a, re a consistent resource for you as well. So again, um, feel free to type in the chat any questions you have throughout the presentation or um, you may also just verbally ask um, since it's a small group. So of course today we're just going to cover basics of APA, um, look at uh, what APA stands for, um, why we're using it, and uh, you know basically uh, what the parameters of uh, APA um, entail. So title page and text citing references, integration of the sources, and so forth. And the reason why I have the slides individually like this is uh, because the um, actual presenta presentation run through includes audio. And since we're doing this um, in a workshop format, um, we don't need that. I can you know, I am the audio. So uh, basically, APA stands for the American Psychological Association. And uh, it's a widely used format. Uh, you may have also heard of the other format that's pretty popular, which would be the MLA, which is not what we use. So APA is uh, basically uh, something we use for consistency in the academic writing structure, so that everybody turns in a paper that's uh, consistent in format, and we don't get you know three-inch margins, things like that, where there's lack of content. So a great resource um, would be the APA style. Um, org website. Uh, it has actually some free tutorials um, to help you with uh, the basics of APA. Um, the sixth edition's been around a while, but they, they kind of look over what the sixth, sixth edition entails. And uh, in addition to that, uh, there's a search um, area here so that if you have any specific questions, you can type it in and it tries to address those questions, or you can go through our frequently asked questions section on this website and look for um, the question you have regarding general APA formatting, references formats with different types of uh, sources, uh, using a DOI instead of the URL um, when available. So that's something that's kind of recently come into play. Uh, and also just some basic writing aspects as well, punctuation, grammar, and so forth. And so running head, which is something um, some students um, sometimes have some questions about. It kind of just overviews the basics on that. So this is a good website to start with. Of course, uh, there are other sources that you know, can be um, used in conjunction with the uh, apastyle.org website. And these are just kind of the basics of the margining, the one-inch margins, and so forth. Um, videos are helpful sometimes. And I always uh, tell you guys or the students that when um, you have a question about formatting of a, something like a title page, of course, you want to make sure that you uh, check with uh, the paper assignment specifics, because there could be uh, some requirements that are in addition to the APA formatting that may need to be on there. 
So when I um, reference uh, videos, um, one of the videos uh, would be make sure, well, making sure that when you look under um, APA aspects um, for videos on YouTube, that you look at uh, videos that are uh, coming from sources that are reliable, like Purdue OWL. So most of you are probably familiar with the Purdue OWL um, website. It has a lot of information. A lot of your instructors probably refer you to this website. So um, a lot of students ask about the references list, how to format electronic sources, uh, scholarly journal articles, which actually, if you're using the the Learn databases uh, it cites it for you, which we will visit in just a moment. But essentially, any questions you may have about in-text citing, anything from the basic to specific um, instances, uh, different authors, different number of authors, um, no author, um, and so on. So sample paper for you to look at that gives you a general APA format. So again, you know, make sure you uh, look at the specifics of your assignment. Um, when putting together the paper, but also um, looking at standard aspects of tab tables and figures, use uh, integration of that, and uh, uh, types of references for your references list. So almost everything um, that you need is on this website, but sometimes we're kind of visual learners and um, we like to have it shown to us. So a video like this, um, can be helpful for something as simple as even just a um, running head. And so I'm just going to um, kind of skip through randomly here on um, the video um, is also available on the Writing Center. Of course, this depends on the uh, Microsoft Word edition that you have. It could be 2007, 2013, so on. So you could also look for videos that are specific to the Word programming. What if we have specific questions? Can we ask them at any point, or will you have a separate Q&A section? You can go ahead and type it in, and I can address it when we have a pause in between um, the presentation, if that's OK. okay. Or I can ask. I'll ask periodically as well. Um, do you have a specific question right now? Uh, well, it reminded me when I saw you and the section on running head, um, my, I, I've always had this question, do dissertations have also running head in the first page and in the ensuing pages? Running head, well, you want to use the template. You have access to the template. I usually give the students a, a template um, from Dr. Hess to look at. And uh, excuse, let, me, let me kind of think back. I believe the running head, yeah, there is a running head on the first page. Um, and then the title page, and then um, no running head on subsequent pages, just like just like your standard APA formatting. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now, the first thing uh, we want to do is make sure that all the each pages can be set up correctly. So, what we want to do is make sure that we have everything at double. Everything should be double spaced, two line spaces. Uh, the margins should be one inch margins all around. I know sometimes the default will be to have one and a quarter inch on the left and the right, but we want one inch all around. And then the font as well should be some standard font, generally Times New Roman and size one. So that will be common across your entire page. Now to set up the title page, first we're going to make the title, our name, and our name. So we can hit return a few times, want to set our, our, ourselves, and then make a title. Below the title, 
write your name and then your affiliation. So again, just keep in mind title page requirements on, let's say, a dissertation template, follow that template. Uh, there could be some discrepancies on that, okay? But the running head is consistent. Now, this title should be no more than 10 or 12 words. It should be descriptive enough where it'll give the reader a broad sense of what the paper is going to be discussing. It should be super long, should be only three words, so you want somewhere in between. Now the next thing we're going to set up is the running header. And the running header is what's going to appear throughout the entire paper. Now to do that, you can double click up here. The other way to do that is uh, if you go into insert and you can insert a header up here. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to insert the page number. The page number, top of the page, all the way to the right. Once we've done that, we can work with the running header. The running head, colon, space. And then this is going to be the first few words of your paper in all capital letters. And generally, this shouldn't be more than 50 characters, but just the first few words is fine. And you can hit the tab button, and it should move your running head over here. If it doesn't go all the way to the left, what you can do is this little small triangle up here, you can move that. And that changes the indentation. You want this all the way uh, to the left. And once you've done this, this is the first part. So right here, this is the complete title. Now what we're going to do next is format the rest of the document. So hit return a couple more times at the bottom. And what you have to do next is leave the section for you. You're going to go into page layout. It's right under section print. Now what this does is you have the section break created. New section starts on a new page. Now to change the header for the rest of the paper, what we need to do is get rid of this running head part. So we just need the title for the rest of the paper. But now if we do this, it's going to show up up here too, which isn't good because we want it to say running head. So I'll undo that, and the way that this works, here when it's a header, you go into the design tab over here, this button will automatically be called Link to Preview. Click that button to unlink it from the previous section. And now you can get rid of the words running head. You just have the title. And now you can see that the header on the first page and the second page are going to be different. The title page is formatted correctly, and now this is formatted correctly. Okay, so just to note, subsequent pages after the title page do not have the running head title. Any questions on that? So I'm just going to stop it here because that's kind of the basics. Okay, so we're going to keep going. Uh, looking at um, just kind of a sample of the running um, of the title page, um, and then we're going to move over to a couple of web um, sources. Sorry, an to... another question on, on title page, please. Yes, yes of course. Uh, yes, so, so how, what's the height of the title? What is the rule regarding that? The height of the title. You mean the font size? No, the height in the page itself. It's, it looked kind of high. Is it supposed to be centered? Is it supposed to be in the upper half of the page? Oh, you're talking. Oh, you're talking about the the actual title on the on the title page itself. Yes. Yes. You would want to use the dissertation template. Um, it actually outlines um, all the specifics there. Okay, so it sounds like I'll just use the template and not find out what's underneath the template. Okay, fine. Uh, I'm not sure. No, no, because of the fact that there are very specific requirements on the title page for this, for the dissertation, and so Dr. Hess has worked very hard to have the template for you guys to basically uh, to use as a as a as a guide format. So APA here is so that you know how to do how to set up that head that header on top. 
Um, but when you're saying ti when you're saying title, uh, the the specifics of what is on that title page, you would want to use the template for that because of the fact that they're very um, CIU guidelines for for that dissertation. So you want to make that distinction. Okay. Yeah, I, I was just trying to find out what's underneath the template because that's not the only work that I'll be doing and that's why I wanted to know the rule, not just to automatically use a template every, a template every time but actually know what's behind it. Um, but I can revert back to the template, that's fine, I'll look at it there. Okay, all right, so writing resources. Um, at, the, at the Writing Center can also help with a lot of the um, content information um, formatting. So um, knowing that your block quotations are anything that uh, would be more than 40 lines. So uh, there's, there's a PDF on just specifics of how to lead into a block quotation. And so that's just one of the many um, resources that you could use. My bad. What happened? Oops. Okay. I lost my page. Give me just a second here. Okay, a PDF on how to cite in references pages, just a general guideline. I've struggled with how to cite a source and citing the original source. Uh, yes, I actually have a video on that. So if you just give me a moment, I will show you that, that exact answer to that question. Okay, thanks, Cyrus. You're welcome. Um, and then also uh, how to use numbers for percentages and so forth. Um, so the correct APA structure of that. And formatting short quotes. Okay, so keep in mind that quotes should have what we call signal phrase, so always kind of lead into the quote, not just have quotes standing by themselves. And then to address the question about, um, a, a, am I correct in your question or the struggle with having, um, you're using a source, but then the source uses a source. Is, is that my, is that a correct interpretation? That's correct, yeah. It's just, okay. um, in, in Zotero, where do you put in the, um, do you put that in the title where you're extracting where the original source is, or or how do you do it? You would actually use the the source that you're finding uh, that you're using uh, because most of the time it's hard, difficult for us to find the original source. So you're just using you would use the source that you're using, and this video will show you how to format that. So here we go. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And also answer some frequently asked questions. It will be in the frequently asked questions section. Um, and then this is everything before that, just how to quote and paraphrase properly. We're all familiar with quotations, where we take the exact words from another source and place them within our text surrounded by quotation marks. A paraphrase is different. Here's our original quote. Happiness, more specifically positive grief, is influenced by genetics. Leading theorists propose a genetically determined set point for happiness above which one cannot rise. Write Peterson and Park, 2009-304. Instead of including these exact words, we may want to provide our reader with just the main point of the text. We do that with a paraphrase. Here is a paraphrase of that quotation. Genetics is partially responsible for a person's happiness, establishing a limit for how happy one can be. Peterson and Park, 2009-304. And with a paraphrase, we still create an in-text citation just as we would when quoting. In creating this paraphrase, we convey the main point while following the number one rule of paraphrasing. 
paraphrase in your own words. We didn't just take the quote and change a couple of the words. We altered everything. The main idea is the same, but the two sentences are very different. There are times where we might want to include a unique word or phrase from the original quotation into the paraphrase. For instance, the phrase set point would be useful to include in the paraphrase. So we do that by placing quotation marks around it. Now let's look at some common questions that may come up while quoting sources. How do we format really long quotations? For quotes that are 40 words or longer, we will create what is called a block quotation. Notice how the quote is set off with the rest of the text and not within quotation marks. It is started on a new line and is then in a half inch or one tab. We have still included the author's last name and the publication date. The page numbers are still at the end of the quotation in parentheses, but after the closing punctuation mark. How can we skip part of a quotation? When typing a quote, we may want to omit part of it if the information isn't essential. We can do this by using an ellipsis or three dots in a row in place of the missing word. In-text citation will do the same. We're reading a journal article that has a great quote from another source. If we use the quote, we can cite the journal article or the original source where the quotation first appears. Ideally, we would use the citation in the journal article to find the original source and then cite the citation from there. However, if we can't access the source or don't have time, we can cite the quote as an indirect source. We do that by including the original source's author in the sentence. In the parentheses at the end of a quotation, we will include the words as cited in and then the author, date, and page number of the secondary source. Does that answer your question, hopefully? It did. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right, so we'll watch the rest. Oh, actually, there isn't too much left. Here we go. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. All right, so that's one of the sources that uh, the videos that are available uh, in uh, our resources um, center um, at the writing center page. Um, and then also additional um, resources would be, uh, let's see, our Purdue OWL you guys just saw, and then sometimes we want some writing um, uh, review pointers, things like that, or assistance. So the Harvard College Writing Center is a good resource for that. Everything from how to turn your assignment to, you know, a topic, um, you know, developing a thesis, counter arguments topic sentences, which are important in structuring your um, paper in general, uh, and just, you know, uh, every process. So this can be a good resource. Hey, Iris, addition, one question I had. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, okay. One question I had on the quote direct quotations, uh, I've always shied away from those because I'm afraid it's going to boost my uh, plagiarism percentages. Is, is that uh -huh. true if you take... Uh, if you take a direct quote and you put it in your paper, does it, it, it seems to me that it's going to boost your uh, plagiarism. Is that true? It, it can. Um, the, the thing is that typically um, when we're using something like Verisite, as instructors, I take a look at, uh, you know, what's being used. You don't want to overuse quotes. So my recommendation would be to use quotes that are, significant in the way or profound in the way that it's stated. So it's so nicely stated that you want to use it that way. So otherwise, I recommend to my students to paraphrase. And so you're, you're absolutely right. You don't want to use too many, especially long quotes. Um, you don't want to use too many of those. So oftentimes, um, to integrate into your um, content or what you're claiming in your paper, you would probably paraphrase. And that is correct because the uh, quoting, um, over-quoting will, will boost your, your uh, your percentage. That is true. Okay. Thank you. That's good to know. Okay. Appreciate it. And then, so, uh, okay. So sometimes we're writing and we uh, put our papers through, let's say, Grammarly. But some of the suggestions, um, you know, we might not uh, be able to correct on our own and we might need some pointers on that. And so I always direct my students to just uh, grammar bytes, which is uh, really simple uh, under the, just kind of the, um, the, 
the handouts on each aspect. So if you have admin issues or um, parallel, someone's got some feedback going on here. I mean, I'm going to have to. And they will take it. Yeah. Hello? Webster, gonna, can you mute, can yes. you mute your laptop, please? Can you mute? Thank you. Because yeah. I, I can mute if, if needed. <laughs> We're okay now? Everybody's good? Okay. Uh, so anyway, um, the grammar bytes uh, can help with a lot of the sentence structure, punctuation aspects. So as an example, if you have um, some problems with uh, comma splices and run on. It just does a quick overview of you know what your problem may be, how to you know solve that problem, and gives you examples as well. Okay, and then in addition to that, we've. Uh, Got some handouts on preposition usage, transition usage, and here is a link to a textbook that a lot of my students use for writing because it helps transition and integrate source material using signal phrases, things like that. It's a template-based book. It's called They Say, I Say. And basically, it covers, this is a whole textbook on PDF, and you can make it bigger when you click on the link, um, but it's a textbook on how to summarize, how to quote, um, different ways to integrate your voice versus uh, source um, material, and then um, there's a lot of information in between, but we're going to kind of skip to the back. I hope I'm not making anybody dizzy. And there's a list of templates you can use to kind of help um, integrate your sources. I'm going to make this a tiny bit bigger. Okay. okay. So sometimes I get from a lot of the papers that I'm reading um, through the Writing Center, just a lot of things always saying, you know, the writer states this and states that and says this and says that. So here is a list of other types of signal phrases you can use. Um, of course, you'll make sure that it actually is you know, appropriate to what you're leading into. Um, and so different ways to introduce uh, the sources, you know, argument and integrating and so forth. And then also transitions that you can use to help organize your papers. So different types of transitions for different types of um, claims and so forth, comparison, contrast, addition. Um, don't overuse the you know moderation is key, of course. Okay. And then also when we're using sources, we want to make sure that, and, and there are also writing resources here as well, that uh, we don't just use any source that's available, that we actually qualify the source and make sure it's appropriate um, for academic usage. So when you use, let's say, website sources, because I know database sources through Learn, typically they're pretty reliable, but if you also want to add to that and use website sources, I always recommend using uh, websites that have .mil, like military, M-I-L, .gov, government sites, .org, uh, nonprofit organizations, um, .edu, education um, institutions. Those tend to be more reliable types of source material. But in addition to that, you might want to uh, also use the CRAP method, which sounds funny, but is very useful on um, gauging your source. following criteria, known as the CRAP test, to critically evaluate any source of information. Currency, 
When was the information published, updated, and or revised? Is the information out of date for the topic? Relevance or intended audience? How much information is presented? Does it provide a superficial treatment or a detailed analysis? Is the information related and relevant to your topic? Is the readership level appropriate, neither too simple nor too sophisticated? Authority. Not all books or journal articles in an academic library are scholarly. Who are the authors and or editors, and what are their credentials? For journals, are articles peer-reviewed? That is, do they have the approval of other experts in the field? For books, are they published by scholarly presses, popular presses, or self-published? Accuracy and verifiability. Does the source match your understanding of the topic? Can you verify the claims in other sources? Never rely on just one source. Is there a bibliography or list of works cited? What types of sources and how many relevant sources are cited? It's an indication of the depth of the author's knowledge. Purpose and objectivity. Is the purpose stated? Is the subject approached from an objective standpoint? If not, what is the author's bias, and how might it influence the information presented? Be wary. There may be more than one perspective on any given issue. Using these criteria, currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose, to critically evaluate sources of information will help ensure that you're only using quality sources of information. Okay, so... That's just so that you know which sources are appropriate for use. And in addition to that, I got one more video. On references formatting. ACA formatting reference recommendations. So when you're looking for videos, just make sure that you know where it's coming from. So this is reliable because it comes from Purdue OWL. Any questions before I start use, or start this video? My best job is Gina Hillen, Cooperation New Online Learning Lab. This big chat takes you through how to format a list of works cited along the APA style. We will use the sixth edition of the APA manual. Your instructor may have different guidelines Follow, always follow the instructor's guidelines. In this week's class, we cover the basic rules of APA citation. For information on APEC citation, please refer to the link in the video description. For this demonstration, we will use Microsoft Word 2007. And you can use, you know, find sources or videos on YouTube that um, have the Word program that you're looking for, but a lot of these are pretty. Um, you know, pretty much kind of usable for different versions. Begin your reference page on a separate page of the email subject paper. It should have the same one-inch margin and header, your essay title and the page number, as the rest of your paper. Label the page references. Enter the word at the top of the page, but do not italicize or put it in quotation marks. Double space all citations, but do not skip space between. To set your line space with the double space, open up the paragraph view in Microsoft Word. Change the default line spacing setting from after key point to zero point. Then change line spacing from multiple to double. Each entry should have a hanging indent, which means that the first line of the citation is flush with the left margin, and the second and subsequent lines are indented five spaces. Create a hanging indent, open up the paragraph view in Microsoft Word. In the indentation under special, select theme. Authors' names are inverted with last name first, as in the example circled in red is the last name and initials for all authors of a particular work for up to and including seven authors. The work has more than seven authors, as in the example circled in blue, lists the first six authors in the ellipses of the theme after the six authors' names. After the ellipses, the last author's name is inverted. Reference list entries should be alphabetized by the last name of the first author of each work. If you have more than one article by the same author, single author references or multiple author references with the same authors in the same order must be entered in 
chronological order from earliest to most recent. Present journal titles in full and maintain the punctuation and capitalization used by the journal in its title. When referring to books, chapters, articles, or web pages, capitalize only the first letter of the first word of a title and subtitle, the first word after a colon or a dash in the title, and proper nouns. Do not capitalize the first letter of the second word in a hyphenated compound word. Italicize titles of longer works, such as books and journals. Do not italicize the underlines or put quotes around titles of shorter works, such as journal articles or essays and magazine collections. For more information on APA citations, please visit the link provided in the video description. This has been a presentation of APA. Okay, so you get the idea on that. Okay, so any questions before I continue? I have one question, Aris. On um, yes. on that on that example you showed, uh, it looked like the, one of those slides had about uh, six authors in it. I thought you were mm -hmm. supposed to use like uh, ETL uh, for uh, and others if you had oh, over three all, or four. Yeah. At all is uh, in the in-text citing, so that's a little different than the references list. Okay. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. In text yeah. versus reference. Okay. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Hello. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, that's a, that's a perfectly valid question. Hello. Okay, and then, hello? It's Webster. Hello? It, it's Webster. Hi, Webster. Yes, I oh, wanted hi, to. Yeah, thank you. How are you? Good. Do you have a question? Yes. Where you have multiple authors, do you do you have to use the alphabetical sequence, or you just do the first one who is identified by publication? The uh, the you mean the reference in the references list, correct? Yes. Yes, it would be alphabetized by the last name of the author. Um, yes. If there um, is no author, then you would um, have uh, the title, and then you yes. would alphabetize by that. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So sometimes uh, we can use uh, uh, what we call citation machines online. Um, there are ones like EasyBib, um, Nightside. Here's a Nightside example. So typically, if you're not using a learned database, uh, where it actually cites your sources for you, and we'll go there in just a moment. And you can use this, um, basically kind of identify which type of uh, source it is, and then let's say it's a film, DVD, or video, and then type in the information that you have. Sometimes, um, especially for movies, you, you may be able to Google it. Um, you could say, you know, you could have um, the movie title and then APA and see if it can do that. But just to kind of make sure, you always want to use um, a guide like a ref, uh, like a Purdue OWL and then um, do the night site. You can kind of paste the, once it produces the um, reference citation, or you can actually put it into your own um, reference list. So... Looking at um, references, we're going to oftentimes uh, uh, students use the LEARN databases. Am I correct? Have, have you guys used these databases before, hopefully? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good. Good. Thank okay. you, Kevin Webster. We were, getting, we we're getting a little bit nervous when we didn't hear anyone say they were using the LEARN database. <laughs> so thank you so much. <laughs> as as yeah, for sure. all know, yeah, as we all know, yeah. we could not be using Wiki as our source. So the uh, Learn Center right, is right. our resource. <laughs> now you tell so, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, academic sources, this is probably the, the place to, to go. So let's just use Academic Complete because that's probably the most comprehensive database. Um, actually, my bad, let me skip. I keep doing this. I, I don't actually mean this one. So give me a second here. Um, I was going to go to ProQuest. So ProQuest has a lot of the sources that a lot of you use for your papers. So this is a database. 
Okay, so I'm just going to type in just a random topic. Um, anybody have one maybe that uh, might be interested in doing a quick search on? Otherwise, I'm just going to type in a, something I just created on top of my head. Anybody? This is a great opportunity for you to ask those questions that are dumping you sometimes in the courses. So what's the one thing that you struggle with in APA that you would like Iris to use as an example? So I'm just going to look up, I'm just going to look at China's global economy as an example for a topic. Um, always make sure that it's full text, of course, um, peer reviewed as well. Um, and then you can also uh, you know, narrow the source type to just scholarly journals or oftentimes it could be other types of sources as well. So you can see there's a bunch of uh, sources, 1,347,000. That's because we're looking at sources from 1899 to 2017, which is probably not really what we're looking for. So I typically like my date ranges to be within five to ten years depending on the topic. So let's say we have narrowed down to 2010 to 2017, that's seven years, that's good. Maybe narrow it down to just scholarly journals. Okay, and so now we're down to 68,000. And oftentimes you want to narrow your uh, search topic as well. And so it usually goes from most relevant to least relevant. So you look through the titles and you say, oh, okay, which one, you know, look like it's something I might uh, want to, you know, use. So let's say, hmm, let's say this one looks good to you as an example. So of course you can always read the abstract, kind of get an idea of whether or not it's something that you might use. And, uh, you want to make sure, actually, you want to modify the full text always, and sometimes peer review depending on your assignment. And we're going to modify that search a little bit. Okay, so let's say this something you might want to use. So um, you read the abstract and then the full text is there. You read, you know, you might be interested in that. And of course the nice thing is you can save it. Um, I believe you can, yeah, if, if, when you have an account with ProQuest, you can actually put it in a folder and then retrieve it later. The nice thing about that is you don't have to go through your email. You can actually um, go to the folder. For my um, doctorate, I basically put everything in a folder because I have I had the same topic um, running throughout my uh, doctorate program, and so I would keep kind of using um, sources and keep putting in sources. Hi, Webster. All right. So anyway, the nice thing again is that it cites it for you, so there's no issue about um, APA formatting for the references list. So of course you have to double space and everything, but you can kind of paste it in for the most part. So sometimes I get some questions about a student saying an instructor says it's in the wrong format. You want to make sure that you pick APA 6 edition and not something like MLA, which is sometimes what it defaults to. So be very careful about the sources you're using or the references list that you're using, making sure that it's the right citation. Okay, so that's the Learn database. That's my oh, that's my site. The Writing Center resources, the videos that we talked about, and then let's go ahead and look through. Um, and then in text citation, we've got uh, a video you can you know look at for that as well. If you look on YouTube, this is the same video that we just saw on uh, the. Um, paraphrasing quoting. This video we are also 
saw on um, the references was basics. Some samples on tables and our sample references page. Um, some uh, details from Purdue Owl about when to use tables and, and figures and so forth. And this is on Purdue Owl. It's hard to see, but you can actually magnify this and go to the pages on the um, Purdue Owl website. Here are some additional links, uh, APA style blog, uh, APA sample paper from Purdue Owl, and so on you can use. And here are some links um, that provide additional APA um, information, uh, such as using et al. So it gives you details on that. Uh, block quotes, active voice, what does that mean? Uh, a lot of times students will turn in a paper to the writing center and say, well, it keeps saying I have too much passive voice. So what is active voice? So the, you know, you could use a link like this or you could, you know, always Google um, active voice and it can probably give you a good idea. So again, the writing center res uh, resources are a good um, place to go. And, uh, you know, those are the videos and all the links and so forth. Okay, so that pretty much concludes my presentation uh, because we have, you know, a little, this way it gives us a little time to uh, field any questions specific to APA or to just, you know, what the Writing Center um, can offer. And just uh, just a side real quick before we uh, look at questions. So. Hello. Hello. So this is the Writing Center. So just a quick wrap up of what we can do. Sometimes you have some quick questions on APA or source material or whatnot. You can just, you know, ask them here. You can just click on here and see if it addresses um, your questions. If not, you can actually ask them directly to us if you scroll down on this page. Do you have questions regarding writing or APA or anything? As you can see, we have many people who ask some quick questions and we try to address that um, within 24 to 48 hours if we can. Um, and then here are our tutors. You request a review. Make sure you look at the details of what is required. Oftentimes, uh, a review can't commence until uh, the materials are received, meaning we need a copy of your Verisite report, Grammarly report, also uh, one or two areas of focus specific. Don't just say APA format. Tell us, do we need help on references or in-text citing, integration of the sources, how the paper is organized as far as, you know, does everything kind of um, work together. So if you're looking at writing aspects, whatever the case is, focus on one or two at a time so that we can get those papers back to you in a timely manner. You can work on that and then we can, you know, work on it again, um, you know, on a second review. So it's, it's, it's faster if we could get one or two areas um, at a time per review because we can do more than one review if needed. Here's our other tutor, Jillian, so you can post a request with me or with Jillian or with Sally. So you get to pick, but ideally you kind of work with the same tutor so we can have a, um, you know, kind of a running um, follow-up um, and, and, you know, get to know your writing and what you need and so forth. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, one of the major things um, that pop up often is the website references, and those okay. are a little those are a little bit tricky with all those uh, funny little signs, as you know. Uh, right. How best can one? There are some straightforward ones with dot yeah. or yeah, but there are yeah. some that are references within references but from the website. How do you Right. Know? We actually we actually covered that before I think you joined us. Yeah, okay. um, if you Thank look you. at <laughs> if you look yes, if you look at the Writing Center resources, um, okay. you can okay. find a video here, let me show you real quick. Thank you.
And this video right here will address that question. Okay, thank you. I will do that. You're welcome. Anything else? Everybody else is good? Okay, I'm good, Iris. So, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, but just keep in mind, if you need our services, uh, the turnaround for a writing center review, once all materials are in, are usually it's usually about 24 to 48 hours, unless we're in an impacted period, like uh, week six of a term. Um, I highly recommend kind of trying to turn something in, you know, giving, giving some time. Um, not two days before the end of you know ter a term. So um, just you know some suggestions on that. But remember, the writing center resources um, can be really really helpful. And sometimes we just need a review on the material. Okay. So thank you, Iris. This was great. So if I could, can I make sure that I have everybody's name on here? I have Alicia, I have Jim Gentry, I have Webster Matumba. Iris, who else am I missing? That's it. The three. Okay. Okay, very good. Well, thanks everyone so much for your participation today, and I hope this was helpful. Again, having such a small group on with Iris really gives you the opportunity to be able to ask your individual questions. As we mentioned, we did record this session, so we will be posting on the SRC, and I will be sending you the review so you can provide us with your thoughts on today's session. Thank you Any so much. Questions? Thank you, Webster. Yes. Thanks, everyone, for participating. And uh, if I don't hear any more questions, then I think we can go ahead and finish the session off. Thank you so well, thank much. Thank you all very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a good, Bye. Have a good week. Thank you. You Bye. too. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.